A Sailor of King George, the journals of Captain Frederick Hoffman, RN, 1793 to 1814. Chapter 1, Early Experiences. One morning, sitting with my mother in the drawing room and entreating her to comply with my wish to enter the Navy, she was so intent on listening to my importunities and her patchwork that she did not observe that the cat was running away with her favourite goldfinch. The cat, with the poor bird in its mouth, was near the door, waiting to escape. Seeing what had happened, I immediately ran to the poor little bird's assistance, but alas, too late, as the cruel creature had torn off one of its wings. Whilst my mother was feelingly lamenting her favourite's untimely death and deliberating whether the cat should be given away, the door opened, the culprit escaped, and Captain Elphinstone entered. On his observing my mother's paleness, he requested to know if anything of a serious nature had occurred in the family. No, replied she, except the loss of a favourite bird, which I certainly regret, as it was killed by the cat in a most distressing manner. And, added she, my spirits are not at this moment very good in consequence of my son's wishing to enter the navy. The first, said he, I lament, as it has deprived you of a pet. The latter may in the end be a matter of rejoicing. Who knows but that your son, if he enters that noble service, may turn out a second hawk. My ears thrilled at his remark. Do you really think, Captain Elphinstone, said my mother with a half sorrowful countenance, that this would be to his advantage? Most assuredly, replied he, as I think it's very likely that war will shortly be declared against that unhappy and distracted France, and he will have a very fair chance of making prize money, and in time will gain his promotion. Quit the room a short time, my love, said my mother to me. In about a quarter of an hour, which I thought an hour, I was sent for. Captain Elphinstone had taken his leave. I found my mother still very pale. I'm afraid, dear boy, she began, that Captain Elphinstone has almost persuaded me against my will. He has spoken of the prospect of the naval service in, in so favourable a manner that I am nearly tempted to let you enter it. And should war unhappily be declared against our unfortunate neighbours the French, and my friend Captain Markham be appointed to a ship, I believe I must make up my mind to be quite persuaded and let you have your wish. Thank you, my dear mother, replied I, overjoyed at what I knew nothing about. A short time after this conversation, war was declared against France, or rather France provoked it, and Captain Markham was appointed to the Blonde Frigate. 